welcome to The Career Studio, a USU career services podcast that helps you navigate your career path. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armistead, your host, and I'm so excited to have Sophie Bassett here, a colleague of mine, here with us today on the show. Welcome, Sophie. Thanks for having me. Sophie is an alumna of USU and earned her bachelor's degree in English. As a student, she also worked for the College of Engineering, which eventually led to working in academic advising. As an academic advisor, she worked closely with career services to schedule presentations, and eventually that relationship led to her current job as a career coach. So in addition to all of this impressive higher education work, Sophie, you mentioned that you were in the audience with Bob Barker during an episode of The Price is Right. Tell us more about this lovely experience. (laughs) Yeah, it was an experience of a lifetime. I have nine girlfriends. I have so eight of us, so nine including me, from high school. So we have been friends since junior high. And we've remained really close through all these years. So we graduated high school 20-something years ago. (laughs) And every year we do a yearly girlfriend trip. One year we went to California to The Price is Right. We got tickets, which was crazy. Bob Barker was just about to retire. This audience might be a little too young to remember who Bob Barker is. (laughs) He was the original host of The Price is Right. Legend. Yeah, legend. (laughs) And we had to go get in line at the studio at about 7 o'clock p.m., sit on the sidewalk until 10 o'clock a.m. for them to start (laughs) weeding you through. You walk in, they interview you, and one of the girls in my group, a good friend of mine, got in actually in up on a game on the stage. But then at the end of the taping, they did a drawing for $100 and a board game. And I walked Anyway, so that was my fame. Such a fun experience. <laughs> Although I have to say, I feel like there was a missed networking opportunity here. Did you get to meet Bob? No, we just got <laughs> to see him. I didn't get to meet him, unfortunately. But the one thing that was so crazy is that the studio is so small. Huh. I think on TV, it made it look really large, but it is tiny. So <laughs> anyway, that was it was a lot of fun. So funny. Well, I love it. Okay, well, we can go ahead and dive into our topic today, but I had to share that first. <laughs> All right. So this month we are looking at networking and specifically we're looking at how it relates to our career and professional development. So with that in mind, Sophie, I was wondering if you would be willing to talk to us a little bit about your college experience and specifically when you were in college, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? (laughs) So yeah, it's interesting you asked that question because I had this memory last week when I was getting prepared for the class I'm teaching this fall. When I was in high school, I really wanted to be a nurse. And I loved my health science classes. I really enjoyed them. I knew that's where I was going to go. My downfall was that I didn't do very well in math. And I got into college and I'd met with the academic advisor who was over the pre-nursing program. And he said, you're not going to cut it, girl. He was rude. (laughs) As a matter of fact, and just said, yeah, you're not. This is not for you. And I took that knowledge and I let him tell me what I was going to do. Looking back, I wish I would have like hired a tutor and fought a little harder to get what I wanted, but I didn't. I was young and impressionable and really took somebody else's opinion to heart when I wish I wouldn't have. From there, I'm like, okay, so what is it that I was good at in high school? And I was always really good at English and I always enjoyed those classes. So I took a couple of English courses and in college and really enjoyed those. And that's where I got me into my English degree. That was kind of my route that I took. But looking back in hindsight, I wish I would have thought. Interesting. And it's so true that for better or for worse, people's impressions can be lasting. And so it's important and it's so hard, especially early on, I think, but it's so important to be critical of the feedback we receive. I think that's a really great point. With that in mind, once you kind of decided to change paths, what steps did you take to figure out, okay, what do I want to do now? In college, you have some leeway with breadth and depth courses. So I started taking the English ones that I could take. And I just really enjoyed those. And so when I started taking all of them, I'm like, this has got to be it. I branched out in other areas in art and sociology, and I just didn't love them. And so when I was always, I knew that English would be, and I hate to say it, more the easy way out because I was good at it. It just came more natural to me that my English degree has helped me immensely along the way. Employers love to know that you can communicate and that you can write. Absolutely. Those are two really huge factors and it was huge. So it's really helped me along the way. Right. Even though it wasn't going to be my first choice. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that you found some transferable skills and were able to apply those as you continued to take steps. So that's great. Okay, well, looking at networking, I'm curious to know how that played a role in getting your first job after you graduated from college. Yeah, so networking was huge. So lo- looking back through the years, I was networking all 
along and not realizing <laughs> that a term. When I started college, I was hired as a secretary just in the dean's office of engineering. Just a student worker who sat at the front answering phones, did some office stuff. I feel like as a student worker, I've always been really friendly. And I think the key is to get to know people, talk to people, get to know them. So as professors would go by or the associate deans, you know, I would just be really friendly. And it was genuine. It wasn't trying to move my way up because that's not what I thought. I, I didn't even know how to do that. <laughs> think of it as an option like that, but. Eventually, my job started changing in the College of Engineering. So one associate dean hired me to be his personal secretary and to edit a book that he was writing. And then that project ended and then I was hired up in the advising office. And so people were seeing my work ethic and that I was friendly enough. I think that they just wanted to bring me in. So after I graduated, they, the College of Engineering offered me a job as an academic advisor. I loved that. But even while doing that, I was in on a project for asked to be the assistant director for Engineering State, which is a summer camp for high school students. They come one week in the summer to campus and learn, you know, just do a bunch of workshops that are based on engineering. And so I was able to do that for the whole time I actually worked in the engineering department as well. And then the time came that my husband and I wanted to start a family. And I always knew that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. It was really hard to leave that job. So I asked the dean's office if I would be able to take the engineering state job with me so I could do it from home because I didn't have to be on campus to do these things. Mm -hmm. And so they said yes. But what was really great about that is I was a stay-at-home mom and I had this little small gig, but it kept me in communication with people all across campus. So I every year had to keep in contact with the same people and it was a really nice foot in the door. Mm -hmm. The networking part with my first job was I think just being friendly and communicating and genuinely asking people and being interested in people. And that's how I was able to get my first job. Great. Yeah. Well, keep going. I want to know, how did this move into your current position? So you talked yeah. about keeping the door open. Keep mm -hmm. going. I want to know more. So when every year when I would come on campus for that one week for Engineering State, I would go and visit the people that I had been emailing and had done scheduling with just to say hi. And people are just so much more willing to work with you. I think when they know you on a more personal basis and a friendly basis. Definitely. And so I was up on campus and Career Services was a place that we used a lot for Engineering State. We would come in and talk to the students about their options to be hired as an engineer. And one day I was just walking across campus and thought, oh, I'm going to pop in and just say hi to Donna and see how they're doing. So I would always do that every year. Every year just Who pop in Donna? and put a face with the name. Who's Donna for those listening? Okay. So Donna Crow is the Director of Career Services okay. and the office that I'm working in now. Perfect. One time I had walked in and I said, oh, my baby is starting school. I, I can't <laughs> believe it. All my kids are now in school. And the next day she called me up and said, you want a job? So that's where it all began. And so that was the, a big piece of networking for me, just keeping connections and telling people about your life. And then it just happened. What a cool story. I love that you recognize different values and different importances at different points in your life. I love that you knew that you wanted to stay home for a time and you made that a priority. But I also love that you kept your foot in the door. And I think that's a piece that sometimes people don't consider until 20 years down the road. And it can be yeah. really hard to get back into the working world at that point really great advice for those considering staying at home. Additionally, I have a follow-up question and you've hit on some of these already, but what are some strategies that you use to build and maintain meaningful connections now in your job? I actually do the same things now that I did then. When I'm walking across campus, I'll stop in. If I know somebody who works in that office, I'll just pop in and say, hi, how are you? How's life? What's going on? As I've gone on in my career, you know, there's times I've gone to conferences and sure. group settings. And when I've hit it off with somebody, you know, if I think about them, I'll just pop in. You know, it takes one minute to send an email. Hey, just thinking about you. How are you doing? I still do that. I still do those things. And it's been interesting, just even in engineering, if I'm over there doing a presentation, you know, I'll pop in and say hi to some of my old friends. And I've even had job offers by just stopping in and you know, saying, hey, are you interested in coming back? And well, not right now. I've got it pretty good right now. So it's just, I think letting people, like just being genuine with people and talking to them and just keeping that connection. It is a connection that you don't have to work on every week or every month. I mean, I, it could be once a year, just popping in and just reconnecting again. I love that personal touch. And I love this approach of networking that it's not a one-time event where you have to say everything perfectly, but more of just building a normal, natural relationship and being there to help people when you're available. I love that approach. Yeah. I think you got to go into it being genuine, like 
do you genuinely care about people? And Absolutely. Because people will read through that part of it if it's for your you know, personal gain. Definitely. So. I totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to transition a little bit here. I know that you've mentioned that your current job is the dream job. It's just a really good fit. And I know for a lot of students, it can be hard to identify what a good fit looks like. And so I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. And maybe you can kind of start with describing how you knew that this was a good fit for you. And maybe you talk a little bit about the balance of family and work life, or maybe it had to do with the company culture or the actual content, what you do on a daily basis. Just talk to us a little bit about how you knew your current job was a good fit? At first, I didn't realize it. When I had been home for so long, I'd been home 10 years. I, it really was a, a heartstrings pull for me. I really wanted to be back out in the workforce. and But then I really wanted to be home too. When I first came back into the workforce, I just had minimal hours, 15 to 20 hours at most. And then as I grew accustomed to that, then I went into three-quarter time. I think when I realized this was my dream job is when I realized how well it fit into my family culture into into my dynamic still being a mom with you know young kids i've got to have that flexibility and i hate to say it but it, it's just the flexibility is huge once the flexibility was there and i was figuring out how to maneuver it in my own personal life i realized i land a pretty good dream job when i really care for the people that i work with i've got a great director and she's hired great people and we just really genuinely care for each other and it's really more of a team environment and seeing how she the role that she's played and the example that she has set has really set an example for a really great team dynamic so i really have hit the jackpot <laughs> in the employment department because I've got flexibility. I've got people I enjoy working with. And it's the type of relationships. They will remain relationships even when I'm gone and not in this position or in this office anymore. If somebody else leaves, uh, relationships that will maintain. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm biased because I work in the same office, but I agree. I, I think for me, some of the selling points were absolutely the people. I think that was probably the biggest thing. I remember being interviewed and which was terrifying, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but I loved, I could tell that everybody on the panel loved their job. They loved the people they worked with. And I wanted to be a part of that. And I think that's such an important piece. You know, you may love the content, but if you can't stand the people you're with, it means very little. Yeah. It's it's not enjoyable. So right. I agree that that people piece has been very important for me as well. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that. If there's times that the job isn't perfect and there's times we have hiccups or, you know, disagreements, but sure. because that foundation is there as a team, we know we can get through it. And it's rare when there's a hiccup, but it's not, we don't live in a perfect world. <laughs> <They happen. laughs> but, Amen. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just such a great team environment. If you can love the team environment. The work actually is so much more enjoyable when you enjoy the people that you're doing it with. Definitely. Okay. I have a, a slight follow-up question. So again, I go back to this concept of like the dream job because I think people get stuck in wanting that dream job. But Sophie, would you say there's only one or do you think you could be happy in a different position if there were the right factors? What do you think about the dream job? <laughs> Most definitely. I feel like I could have many dream jobs. This one is just happens to fit really nicely right now in this phase of my life. But I definitely think there's multiple dream jobs. And, and then depending on what season of life you are in, on a personal note, I love to read about health and wellness, and I love to study the Bible. So having those three things that would be an ideal job for me. Like that would be like the ultimate dream <laughs> job. In fact, I actually do something like this on the side that fills that personal niche. It gives me just enough to keep me satisfied in that area. So I really feel if you have other like hobbies or things that really pull you in a different direction. You can do both. So figure it out. Prototype. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, in our office, there's a big word called prototyping and just keep trying, keep trying until something fits and something works. I love that. And I love that you're looking at a human being as like a three-dimensional person who, just like you said, we have work, we have our families, we have other interests, other things that we are invested in outside of work. And we don't have to have all of those pieces in our jobs. And right. so I think, just like you said, being able to look at different avenues for exploring, and you may find that by volunteering, that leads to a full-time position that happens all the time. Yeah. But I love just this idea of exploring and being involved in lots of different areas. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Great advice. All right. Well, Sophie, unfortunately, we're just about out of time here, but I do want to ask one final question. And that question is, if you could give students one piece of advice about networking as it relates to their career, what would it be? Okay. My biggest piece of advice. I think that many students or many people don't know about this thing called the hidden job market. And 75 to 80% of people who get a job is through, not through a job posting. It's through this, through this hidden job market, which entails networking. <laughs> so when you are looking for a job, talk to people, let them know what you are wanting, put yourself out there, do some research, go to LinkedIn. I think if people really realized that they just started talking about what they want to do, there's going to be people who are going to have connections for them. So just talk to people, tell them what you're interested in, and it really will pay off in the long run. Great piece of advice, Sophie, and I totally agree. Well, I have so appreciated your holistic view of careers and and really just your outlook on life. And I enjoyed our conversation and loved what you've shared with us. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Thanks, Marissa. It was a pleasure. Thanks for joining us here at the Career Studio today. Please remember to join us next week as we continue to discuss this month's theme of how to have a networking mindset wherever you go. 